Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Tim. Welcome to Vintage Food Farm, or should I say, welcome to Sea and Reap Cambodia. We're going to tell you everything you need to know when you are travelling in Cambodia. But first, we're going to get something to eat. So this is a very, very cool Cambodian street stall. These prawn things are to die for. Is that banana? Yeah. Banana? Okay, banana. Yeah, beautiful. So could we get um, a prawn fritter? Shrimp cake. Shrimp cake. Banana, potato, uh, potato, ball. Ball. What sort of ball? Inside bean. Bean ball. Oh, okay. Can we get a shrimp cake? And a uh, banana. Yes. Look at these, yum. So beautiful, fresh banana. Banana and one shrimp cake. A kuncharan. So that is 3,000 real. How much is that? Um, 75 cents. 75 cents. Bargain. And so yummy. Not looking for So Tim just nearly ripped us off. <laughs> this one? Oh, thank you. One, two, three. Akun Charan. Subsubai. Thank you so much, Akun. Akun Charan. Look at the hot oil. So this is a shrimp cake and I accidentally just got carried away and took a bite because they are so good. They have whole shrimp in them but the shell is so fried that it is completely easy to eat. It tastes so shrimpy and so beautiful. You need to get these. Mm. When you are in Cambodia, they are amazing. Huh. So good, hey? Mm. So amazing. And how oh. much was that? 75 cents for a prawn, a shrimp cake and a fried banana. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say anything, I'm just trying to wait for another bite. <laughs> mm. And then this is a squashed, flattened, fried banana. Mm. This could be the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. Oh wow. So if you want to know what's going on in Sea and Reap as far as news goes on an ongoing basis, have a look at the YouTube channel For Real. And the reason I was reminded of that is I know that one of Jeremy's favourite foods is the deep fried banana and now I totally get it. If you come to Sea and Reap and you don't get a deep fried banana, there is something wrong with you. You need to get one. They are better than you would ever expect and so is the shrimp cake. And the two of them, only 75 US cents. So we're sitting in a cafe in the middle of Sien Reap. It is cool, it is dark, they've got cold drinks, and we're gonna tell you everything that you need to know about traveling in Cambodia. So we've been to Cambodia a few times, and we do know a few things that will make your life a lot easier. So the first thing we're going to cover is the currency. And it's a little bit different to most countries because they actually use 
Cambodian real and US dollars. So the conversion rate is 4,000 Cambodian real to one US dollar. And when you are shopping in and out of the shops and the restaurants, they will interchange between Cambodian real and US dollars. So you might pay for something in US dollars and you might get change in part US dollars and part Cambodian real. Usually the real is for the smaller amounts and the US dollars is for the larger amounts. So a good tip is if you are bargaining in a market, um, is to bargain in real instead of US dollars because it just seems to give you a better starting point. The other thing about the currency is you need to have new notes or not damaged notes because if you have old, torn, damaged US or Cambodian notes, um, the people can't use them and other people won't accept them, so then they won't accept them. So when you get money out at an exchange or when you get change from a tuk-tuk driver or a restaurant, make sure that the notes are in good condition because there could be a chance otherwise that you wouldn't be able to use them. If you want to change some of your notes, go to a local supermarket and buy something and they will be able to change it easily. So Tim just got his favourite banana smoothie. Banana lassi. Banana lassi. Mm. So banana, yoghurt. Mm. Good. That is wonderful. <laughs> so moving on from money is some of the useful apps that you will use. So the first thing that you need is a currency converter. So if you're really good at maths, you won't need it, but it does also help to communicate with shop and market staff as to how much money you're talking about if there is a, um, a, a language barrier. So we use a currency converter. There's a million on your Google Play or your App Store or whatever it is that you get your apps from. Um, but get yourself a good currency converter and work out how to use it before you get here. And, then, and that will give you the Cambodian reel. And then you can also show that to people when you are talking about money. So we use Currency Plus. And you can put a selection of different types of currencies in there. So we normally have the most frequent countries we go to and when you get a price for something so if someone asks you for one US dollar I can go to the US dollars type one and then I see that's 4,139 real but the general exchange here is one to four thousand and that's been the same ever since we first came here so another app that is really handy is a good translate app we use Google Translate, but there are a heap out there. Um, and what that means is if you are looking for something and nobody understands you, you can just type in the English and it will give it to you in the um, Sanskrit Khmer language and they will understand what it is most of the time. So I'll give you an example. We went shopping the other day in a supermarket and I wanted to buy shiitake mushrooms and I wanted dried shiitake mushrooms and I was able to say that clearly using the Translate app and the staff knew exactly what I wanted and they showed me exactly where they were. So that's the Translate app there. So you just enter in what you want in English and then it will convert it from English into Khmer. It will not only write it in Sanskrit so that a Khmer person can read it, it'll also have a, um, a microphone button so that you can actually play it and say the words to them. So very handy. You can also just push the microphone button and speak into the phone. Dried shiitake mushrooms. And it will convert for you or put, and it will translate for you. So once you get the hang of the translator, it is really easy and it really helps if you need to ask about random things. And it also work, works in reverse. So if you're trying to speak to a Khmer person and you want to know what they're saying, you can actually change it so that they can talk Khmer into your phone and will actually translate it to English for you. When it comes to getting money out, the first thing to do is to make sure that your credit card that you are bringing or your debit card does not have astronomical foreign credit card fees. So we used to have a bank that gave us free overseas ATM fees. Um, they've just recently revised that. 
so I'm not sure we didn't get a chance to have a look but I think we get like five free transactions a month so we just make sure we get enough cash out then but know what it is because some of the banks charge extortionary amounts on overseas ATM fees and you want to be able to get cash out of an ATM when you're choosing your ATM um, we like to choose one that is in one of the larger like ABA banks or one of the larger banks that has a big glass room with a lot of ATMs and, and, and a guard outside. If you use a smaller ATM like this one, there's just more chance that someone could have gotten in and put a skimmer in or a, a camera or something. And it has never happened to us and I'm not saying it will. but. It's better to be safe than sorry, and if you do have the chance to be careful, then just do it. Also, notify your bank or banks um, before you come to make sure that they know that you'll be using your card overseas because otherwise, this has happened to us back in the day, you will get over here, they will see the transaction and think it is a suspicious transaction, and they will freeze your cards. Now, if you notify your bank, they will put a note and they will know that you are using it overseas. There is still a chance that they could think it's suspicious activity depending on where you're spending money. But if that happens and they do freeze it, all you need to do is ring the number on the card and they will reinstate it straight away. Um, so with that, have a couple of cards, have a couple of options. It's a good idea to carry around a reasonable amount of cash because you will find that a lot of places don't actually take credit cards or debit cards and even some of the places that do they do have sometimes some high fees and you might find it more effective to pay in cash so the next topic is communication and phones now in this day and age with social media and with messenger and with whatsapp it is not as important to have a local sim um, Tim and I usually do get a local sim and the reason we do is for the data so we went and got a local SIM here at Metphone and it cost us $15 for 50 gigs so that's a lot of data and that lasts us a long time um, and that means that we can access social media and everything else that we need to when we're walking around. Um, so it's not so much about the phone number, it's more about having access to Facebook Messenger so that we can keep in contact with friends and, friends and family at home and also so that we can contact each other. But in, a, in an emergency, um, we do have a Cambodian phone number then. The $15 is for a month of 50 gig. Um, and very, very easy. You do need to take your passport in with you, which is the same as most Southeast Asian countries. Having said that, you don't need it. If you can use restaurant Wi-Fi's and hotel Wi-Fi's, um, you can probably get away um, without one. Even on the bus between Siem Reap and Cambodia, we had free Wi-Fi. I'm going to say the, the Wi-Fi in Cambodia is exceptional and is way better than Australia. So you can get away without a SIM card if you wanted to. Um, it's just something that we probably are just in the habit of doing. So the next topic is transport. And in Cambodia, that means tuk-tuks. So there's two sorts of tuk-tuks. There are the smaller baja um, imported tuk-tuks which have actually only been around for a few years and then there are the old-school remorks um, before you come to Cambodia you'll get a lot of people tell you that it's dodgy and you're gonna get ripped off and people are gonna grab your stuff it is honestly not it is we've had the best experiences here you need to be aware it is a country where people don't have money so you always have to be aware of what you're doing but if you are careful the chances are that not much will happen to you and it is a really safe country we have had a number of occasions where we a number where we've accidentally given people significantly too much money people that don't have anything and they have given us the money back so I really do want to make sure that people don't come here thinking that they're going to get scammed or ripped off when you're ordering a tuk tuk there's a number of different options there are grab tuk tuks there are pass pass app, app tuk tuks um, there are just normal tuk tuks and I think there's another couple as well we use grab and the reason we use grab is because we can put in our credit card we have an app and we can order the tuk-tuk from whatever destination we are in to whatever destination we want 
and it tells us how much that is going to be up front. So there's no negotiating, there's no cash involved, it's all very simple. We get in, we get out, we know where we're going, we can plan ahead with um, addresses and maps and get to where we want to go. The other way is for you to just walk up to a tuk-tuk driver and negotiate. If we do have to negotiate, we'll often get the price up on the Grab app first so that we will just walk up to the tuk-tuk driver and say, uh, Sala Hotel, grab price $1.50 and they'll be like yes, they'll just match it straight away. If we just walked up to that same tuk-tuk driver and said Sala Hotel, they would start at $3 or $5 and we'd have to work our way down to $2 or $1.50. So knowing your grab price, even if you don't want to use grab, you might see a tuk-tuk driver you think needs a break, um, then you can just use that as the price. So this is the grab app. So it has lots of different options. So you, what you do is you select what type of ride you want. So we like the remorks. So I push remork. It asks me where we want to go to. So if we want to go back to our hotel, we select that. It asks where we're going from. And what I can do is I can move it just on the map. So that the grab would come and pick us up right at the door of the restaurant. All we have to do is step into the grab. I choose this pickup, so we get to see the price and then we can see the, the directions as well between here and the actual hotel that we want to go to, so we see everything all up front. So when Tim talks about a remork, so there are the smaller, speaking of tuk-tuk drivers, <laughs> so the reason that we use a remorque rather than one of the smaller tuk-tuks and we choose that on the Grab app is that it's larger, it's cooler, it's more open, it's easier to get in and out and it's also safer as far as people snatching and grabbing from you in your tuk-tuk. Now there's always a lot of warnings about people driving up beside you and putting their hands in and grabbing your phone or your bag and that is a real thing and it does happen. So don't have your phone or your GoPro or your camera hanging out the tuk-tuk. Have your bag and your phone and everything in between where they can't grab it so easily. Um, and it, we've never had anything happen, but I know that other people have. So there's also other apps like Pass App, which is also a rideshare app. Um, but any of them are fantastic and it is so easy to get around using them. You could look up a tourist destination, you could look up Anchor Wat and you can go into the Grab app and you can get a tuk-tuk to Anchor Wat. You can go to the War Museum, you can go to the airport. Anywhere you want to go is totally up to you. You don't have to communicate, you don't have to negotiate, you can work it all out on a app like Grab app or Pass app. So this is a really big one and we see it everywhere. You are here on holidays, you are here to enjoy yourself, you are here because it's cheap. So don't get angry with people who live here, who don't have a lot of money, who are just trying to get the best price they can or to get your business or to give you a tuk-tuk ride or to sell you a t-shirt or to sell you a drink, whatever it is. That is their job, that is the only way they survive. All you need to do is just say no thank you, a kuncharan, subsabai, whatever you want to say, um, but no thank you, a little shake of your hand and keep walking. And even if people are following you, they won't follow you for too long. Um, it's just a part of the price that you pay for being in a country where people are pretty desperate for money. So smile, be nice. Um, if you are not going to buy, don't lead them on, don't talk for half an hour because they are trying to run a business and keep your cool and if you are not a patient person, practice. So this is the daggiest tip of all, but I stand by it. I have lost probably five hats in tuk-tuks in Cambodia. So when you buy a hat or when you bring a hat, make sure you have a string around it because it is so beautiful and breezy and windy in the back of a tuk-tuk, but the number of times I've lost my hats is ridiculous. So this, so this is another random tip. When you are on holidays, particularly if you are gone for a while, um, you absorb and love all of the amazing local food and then our experience is eventually you get fooded out and you want Western food. 
and then other nights you might be so tired because you've been out to the temples um, and you've been running around in the heat and you had a late lunch and you didn't eat and you want something to eat. The best thing ever in Cambodia is Food Panda. Now there's a couple of different apps, we use Food Panda, but we can sit in our hotel and we can order whatever food we want, Khmer food, Western food, and to be honest, usually if we're ordering Food Panda, it's Western food, it's either pizza or hamburgers or KFC or something. And you can just get the app up, put in your hotel, select the food you want, and it will be delivered to your hotel. So you need to go down to the lobby and pick it up, um, and it is cheap as chips. The delivery fee is either free or 50 cents or something like that. There are a huge range of Khmer dishes and a huge range of Western food, um, and it is significantly cheaper than your hotel is likely to be, and particularly room service. So this is the Food Panda app. You can see there's lots of different categories of food and drinks and you can order whatever you want. You will see the price up front and they will say it'll be delivered be between 10 and 40 minutes would be our experience depending on what you are ordering. Um, if you're ordering something like fried chicken it could be 10 minutes. If you're ordering something more elaborate like a pizza it could be 30 minutes. Um, so it varies, but very reliable, very cheap. You've got the rating on there as well, so you can get a five-star meal, um, and that is a really good backup to have in the back of your head um, if you need some food delivered to somewhere. When you come to Cambodia, don't worry about packing absolutely everything for every single possible scenario that could go wrong. There is nothing that you can't get over here. Um, the supermarkets have all the toiletries, everything that you could possibly need. They've got um, batteries, they've got Panadol, they've got toiletries, they've got toothpaste, toothbrushes, deodorant. You could come here with nothing and you would be okay. So pack light. Don't worry about overpacking and you can get everything you want here. We shop at many different mini marts and supermarkets every single day across Cambodia. If we just want soda water or something for the night time, we will go to a mini mart like Asia Mart in Sien Reap. If we want a little bit more, we'll go to the Anchor Supermarket um, and we just get a tuk-tuk there. The main thing that we use the mini marts and the supermarkets for is to get cold drinks to put in our mini bar in the hotel room. Um, so you can get soda water or water from 50 cents to a dollar. You can get beers from 50 cents to a dollar, whatever you want, and fill your fridge up so that you're not paying mini bar prices, which are still reasonable here, but they're still a lot more expensive than the, the supermarket or the mini mart. Drinks are very, very, very cheap here. Um, and you need to be careful because you can't drink a ridiculous amount in a foreign country where people have no money and not be at risk um, late at night sort of thing. Um, but you can get cocktails for $1.50 to $2.50. You can get happy hour cocktails for a dollar. You can get beer for 50 cents or 75 cents. Um, there is limitless cheap cocktails, beers, spirits, you name it. The other thing that's really cheap is bottled water um, and soda water and all that sort of thing. If you have a hotel with a happy hour or a restaurant with a happy hour and it has two for one, check what the one price is to make sure that it is actually cheaper. Um, but it is not hard to find very, 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 very nice cheap cocktails, alcoholic drinks, soft drink and water in Cambodia. So as far as your um, health goes, um, make sure that you always use sunscreen, hats, insect repellent. Make sure that you've got all your immunizations for travel up to date and that if you need malaria tablets or anything like that that you've seen your doctor beforehand and you have taken them at the right time. Also, you must have travel insurance. You could get yourself into a lot of trouble very easily and travel insurance is very cheap and affordable. You are not invincible. Um, there are many, many accidents um, and things go wrong all the time in Southeast Asia, so you must have travel insurance. If you need basic medical things like Panadol or uh, antacids or anything, 
in Cambodia you can get anything from the pharmacy so even um, what we would consider prescription drugs are often available over the counter in a pharmacy so you need to be careful you are responsible for yourself here um, but you can get most basic medicines at a pharmacy and they are usually very cheap and usually the pharmacist speaks English as well um, if you really need a communication to be happening about what is wrong with you, keep going, you will find a pharmacist that speaks English, but if it is something serious, contact your health insurance and they will put you through to a doctor and help you to deal with it. So when you are in Cambodia, you are hot and you are sweaty and you may even use up to two changes of clothes a day, sometimes we do. The cost of the laundry service in a hotel, even cheap compared to any other country, is still a little bit more than what you would want to pay. But there are thousands of these little laundry shops around all of Southeast Asia. Um, and in Cambodia, it is usually, um, in a tourist area, it will be a dollar a kilo for your washing. So that is so affordable and they will wash it perfectly they will dry it, they will fold it, they will even iron it if you wanted them to, which you don't need because you're in Cambodia. Um, if you go to some of the bigger cities like Phnom Penh, you can get it for 50 cents a kilo and even less. Um, but in Sien Reap, you can walk into any laundry place. We go to one on Sok San Road. Um, we've been to going to her for years. It is fantastic. It is a dollar a kilo. Our clothes come back so beautifully washed and folded. It is just a joy to receive them. Um, and we do that probably once a week. We'll go down and take our washing in. If you take it early in the morning, it is ready by 8 p.m. that night, or you can just pick it up the next day. Whatever you do, let her know when you're gonna pick it up. Don't let her wait up till 8 p.m. for you if you're gonna pick it up the next day, which means you do not have to bring too many clothes to Cambodia. Some Southeast Asian countries, it's not as easy to get good coffee. Um, in Cambodia, you can get very good coffee everywhere. There are coffee shops. Our hotel even does like proper barista coffee for us every single day. It's fantastic. But there are many, many quality coffee shops all around Phnom Penh and Sien Reap. And even in the countryside, you can get yourself a coffee. If you come here, I suggest you try drinking iced coffee because that is so much more cooling. But I drink iced coffee, Tim drinks hot coffee. And the coffee here is addictive. A Khmer iced coffee? Wow. So when you come to Sien Reap as a tourist, you'll come to the main town area and they have all of the touristy shops and pubs and clubs which do have fantastic food as well, don't get me wrong, we eat here all the time. Then they've got all the local restaurants that are sort of out around the outskirts of the town. They've got the old market which is in the centre of the town which is half local and half touristy. Um, so that's a really nice place to go. Stinking hot in the day, but a nice place to go and you can get some very local food. You can see how they sell all their fruit and vegetables and their meat. If you want a much more local market experience, you can go out to the Salu markets and you will get as much local as you can handle. So it's got all of the meats and bugs and critters and um, fruits and vegetables and herbs. It's got clothing, it's got jewelry, it's got toys, it's got sewing ladies. Um, it has everything that you could possibly want and it is only a, a dollar or so, a couple of dollars to get a tuk-tuk out there from CN Reap um, and you will definitely get a proper local market experience. You are going to be walking in fish guts and water that has come from seafood and meat and vegetables. It is a local Cambodian market. So what you feel like is clean and what it is may be different, but I can tell you that stuff is really fresh. And even if you are staying in a five-star hotel, guess where they are buying their fruits and vegetables and meats from? If you are in Phnom Penh, there is the Russian market, which is absolutely fantastic. They have fantastic food, fantastic souvenirs, and a lot of local as well. Um, our favorite market in Phnom Penh is probably the BKK market, um, but then there is also the Oris, what's it called? Orise. But there's also the Orise markets, which are absolutely huge. So B Russian market, BKK, and Orise um, is definitely worth a look at in Phnom Penh. 
So the other big deal in Cambodia, which is not as big a deal as what it would be in somewhere like Vietnam, is crossing the road. But the theory is the same. So there are tuk-tuks and trucks and cars and mainly bikes um, on the roads here. So whether you are in Phnom Penh or in Sien Reap where it's a little bit quieter, you do need to be careful when you're crossing the road. The way you cross the road is you look both ways, you walk at a steady space, no sudden movements, no sudden stops. You watch the wheels and the handlebars of the bikes that are coming towards you and you will know what they're going to do and you walk across the road. If there are cars and trucks, be a little bit more cautious because they may or may not feel like they want to give way to you, but you can stop and let them pass, wait till there's bikes coming and walk out slowly. Um, one word of caution is that sometimes you might see a zebra crossing or a, um, a walking traffic light or a traffic light and you might think, oh, this is like the Western world where I just walk out when the light's green. No, 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 no. You still need to be careful. 50% of the people may stop. The other 50% will just keep going. So treat every time you cross the road the same, even if there is a zebra crossing, even if it is in a touristy area, because they will sometimes keep coming. So Tim has learned a tip over the years about crossing the street. If you're crossing the street and you're not completely confident, one thing you can do is just wave your hand, hold your hand down a little bit and just wave it a little, just like that, a gentle wave. And everyone who's driving up towards you generally sees that and they understand that they need to be more cautious of you and it'll just give you a bit more space as you cross the road in most cases. So one of the things that people used to say, I don't know if they still say it or if I don't, I'm out of touch, but they used to say don't eat fresh salad, don't eat fresh herbs, don't eat ice because you will get sick. Um, and oh, I don't know. Um, the first time we went to Vietnam in like 2003 for about 30 seconds we stuck to that and then we realised that the fresh herbs and the um, vegetables went with pho and um, ban sao and we just got over it very quickly and we ate them. Um, I'm about to have a glass of soda water with ice and people might say don't have ice. I'm going to say it's very hard to know what is good and bad ice. It is very hard to know what is happening in a kitchen. Um, even if you did all of the right things, you don't know that what you are eating on your plate of cooked food has not come in contact with cold water or fruits and vegetables in the kitchen. So if you are worried, do not eat all that stuff. But, and use your nose. If something doesn't smell right, don't eat it. Um, but I'm going to say, with the exception of Tim having iced coffee in Phnom Penh about 10 years ago, where the ice was crushed on the same floor as the seafood market and he got sick, apart from that, <laughs> we have been okay. So I don't know, and we eat, we eat everything, like we eat everything. Um, so I don't know if our guts are just uh, Southeast Asian proof. Um, or if it's not as bad as what it used to be or if other people are more sensitive. So that one is up to you. Um, but just so you know, we do eat pretty well everything. We were out in the countryside the other day eating yellow pancake with piles and piles of fresh herbs from their garden. So I didn't get sick. I don't know. Can I just say there were two of the best coffees I've ever, ever had in my life. After the first one, I went back for another. And also in Southeast Asia on a hot, hot day, one of the really nice things is actually a nice big block of ice in a glass of beer. It doesn't water it down, just keeps it really cold. It, it actually is really refreshing. And we would never have beer in ice in Australia. Well, I don't even drink beer in Australia, so. So another thing that comes up, which is really, really heart-wrenchingly sad, is begging and beggars. Um, it is a really tough one. There are many, many reasons why you shouldn't give money to beggars. Um, for instance, there are a lot of really cute kids begging. Um, it sets them up for a lot of problems. And they may not be going to school right now because they are um, hooked up in these begging businesses. Um, it may lead to um, a bad message for the rest of their life as well. There are heaps and heaps of really good charities um, that you can donate to. 
There are elderly people that are begging. There are disabled people that are begging. Um, it's pretty full on, but you need to make sure that people that are begging who are disabled have not been deliberately disabled so that they can beg. And then it's up to you. So we do sometimes give money to people that are um, disabled in ways that, I mean, this is just crazy to be even talking about, but that are disabled in ways that it couldn't have been deliberately um, inflicted on them and by themselves or somebody else. Um, we sometimes give to elderly people. Um, we actually gave to a kid the other day because I felt so bad and immediately I realised the mistake that we had made and that it was absolutely the wrong thing to do. But it is all around you and it gets to you, um, especially if you go out to the countryside and some of the, um, the outlying suburbs in Phnom Penh. Um, yeah, but give to a charity, don't give to beggars is the ultimate rule. Um, and sometimes to be heartless could be the best thing to do. So if you are relying on your phone for tuk-tuks and grabs and communication, bring a power bank. Bring a power bank, get one from Kmart or a cheap shop and bring it and charge it overnight and put it in your bag and then you have charge for any any unforeseen uncharging moment. We're sitting in Pub Street right now and it's fairly quiet. Um, there's a lot of bikes riding around but most of the restaurants are closed. When you come here at night, it is pumping. It is absolutely incredible. There are music. It is not as brothelly as some other countries and some other towns. Um, it's just a really nice, it's a little bit party. There's a lot of families. Everyone's, you know, like eating really great food. It's a really, really nice light vibe. Um, there's lighting, there's crazy stuff happening, there's people cooking rotties, there's cheap drinks, there's cheap food. Um, it is still um, a place where you need to know where your phone is, know where your wallet is, um, stuff happens. It would happen to you in any big city, um, but totally amazing. And of all of these sort of places, Sea and Reap is pretty good. So if you come to Sea and Reap Cambodia, and even Phnom Penh, and you don't go to some of the temples, you're a dum-dum. And the other thing that would make you a dum-dum is if you don't have a hat, sunscreen, insect repellent, especially if you're going to sunrises because there are bugs everywhere. And the other thing is modest clothing. So you must cover your shoulders and cover your knees. And we just saw somebody yesterday um, who was asked to leave a temple because they weren't wearing the right clothes and that was actually Angkor Wat. And this person could have traveled halfway across the world to go there um, and her tour group leader had not told her. So always make sure you have modest clothing to wear into a temple. If you have a singlet because you're so hot, just bring a scarf, buy yourself a Khmer scarf at the markets and put that over your shoulders. But make sure that you are either wearing pants or a skirt or dress that goes below your knees because it is a really serious sign of disrespect and you need to not do that. The other thing is temple etiquette and it is a thing. If you go to the temples and if you go to the sunrise, people are there because it is one of the most special places in the world. Don't be yelling and talking and jabbering. Give people their space and their time and their quiet time in such an amazing place that may be the only time they ever get to go there in their whole life. They don't want to hear about your social media. They don't want to hear about your life. They don't want to hear about what Jane and Sam did the night before. So be quiet, be respectful. Um, you can be quiet and you can watch the sunrise over Anchor Wat without having a very loud gas bag with your friends. So as far as the logistics of getting to the temples, Anchor Wat um, opens the front gate at 5am and then the temple itself actually opens at 6am. Um, so if you want to go there for the sunrise, you can get in at 5am and you can go and sit in front of the moat in front of Angkor Wat and you can plant yourself there and you can watch the most spectacular sunrise in the world. It is incredible. If you want to buy your tickets on the morning that you are going to Angkor Wat and you are going there for sunrise, you will need to leave your hotel at about 4am. Your tuk-tuk driver can take you to the ticket um, building, which is not at Angkor Wat. 
you purchase your tickets and then you go out to Angkor Wat. You get your tickets stamped and then you go into the temple. You, will not, you won't be able to get into the temple for sunrise until 5 a.m. and you won't be able to get into the actual Angkor Wat temple until 6 a.m. If you have pre-purchased your tickets on a day before, you've got a three-day pass and you've done it a few days before, um, you could leave your hotel at 4.30am and you would be there in plenty of time. Um, I suggest you get there earlier rather than later as far as getting a good position for the sunrise. But even if you didn't, um, there is still plenty of places where you will be able to get a good view of the sunrise. A tuk-tuk to get out to Anchor Watch should cost you about $15 US um, and they will drop you off. You need to be prepared to walk a little bit um, and they will drop you off and wait around the corner from whichever temple you are at. You will go and see that temple and then you will walk back to your tuk-tuk driver who, if he is any sort of tuk-tuk driver, will have cold water but make sure you bring water with you anyway. Um, and then you can either go to another temple if you still have the energy or the, or the tuk-tuk driver can take you back. You can get a one-day pass to the temples or you can get a three-day pass to the temples. If you get a three-day pass, you have to use it in the next 10 days. So you can go any three days out of the next 10 days. I suggest if you have the time you do that because the temples are so worth going to. They are all so different and all worth visiting, but it is so hot that you almost miss out if you try and do too much at once. Um, and we've learnt that over the years and we now get a three day pass and we go out and we do a temple every, you know, few days. You can also buy your tickets for Angkor Wat and the temple complexes online now. Um, it's still the same process where you take your own picture, um, but they give you a digital copy, which the guys with the ticket check areas and the gates will actually scan a QR code, which matches your photo to your face. Okay, so I am the wrong person to give you this warning. The monkeys at the temples will um, try and get any food you have. They will jump up at you. I literally was uh, semi-attacked by two monkeys the other day and I am still going back to get more video of them because they were so cute. Um, so you do need to be careful. When I got back to the hotel and told them about my day, they said you need to be really careful. Um, the monkeys could hurt you, so don't have cans of Coke and peanuts and, and bread and food because they will jump up to try and get it. Um, but I got the best footage ever of one monkey jumping up and grabbing and trying to rip off my dress and the other monkey jumped onto the camera and ripped the microphone off um, and we just saw them grooming each other and we saw them bathing and it was really incredible. So don't go near the monkeys, be very careful. My job is done. So um, the next tips are not necessarily tips. This is just for your information what we do. So we do one of a number of things. We always book one airline all the way through. And the reason that is, is especially um, nowadays, there are so many delayed flights and cancelled flights that if you've got one airline, and you get a delay, they are just going to put you on the next available flight. Whereas if you have multiple cheap airlines, which usually does not even work out that much cheaper, um, depending on who you go with, you can end up losing money or just even having to have a fight to get your money back or even just the effort I can't be bothered with of getting your money back. So we book one airline all the way through. We check in our luggage all the way through so that it is checked in from Australia, to see and reap and we don't have to worry about it. Um, we book a package, we use booking.com but we could use any of those sites, whatever, whatever is the best deal for you and we book a hotel in one place because the accommodation is so cheap here so that we don't have to worry past that. So we book one hotel in one city and then when we get here, we travel out to wherever we feel like. So we might take a plane, it wasn't affordable this time, so we took a bus, and we will book our accommodation online for wherever we wanna go. So the other day we took a bus to Phnom Penh, that's a five hour trip in a bus, we booked a couple of nights accommodation, and then we came back. If we wanna to go to Battenbang, or if we wanna to go to Sihanoukville, 
um, or w the island or wherever we want to go we have one base and then we go from there so because it is so much cheaper when you do a package that doesn't work out that much more expensive for us and it gives us the freedom to come over, chill, go when we feel like it, come back when we feel like it, not have to lug all our luggage around. We just grab a couple of days clothing and we travel to wherever we want to go. So the cheapest way that we have found to book a holiday in Southeast Asia prior to this year is using a package with um, booking.com or a go to whoever you choose where it's got flights and accommodation combined and then we book one hotel, one lot of flights, and then we travel out from there using whatever we want to do and book whatever accommodation we want to do. And we found that to be significantly cheaper. This year, it was cheaper for us to book the accommodation online with booking.com or whoever, and then actually book the flights separately through Singapore Airlines. Um, and this is the first year that that has ever happened. And then when we got here, we found out that the reason local airlines are so expensive is because there was a number of airlines and now due to COVID, it's gone down to one, so there's no competition. Um, so there's a whole lot of reasons that we didn't understand at the time. Um, but basically either book a package um, or book one sort of accommodation and then move out from there is what we have found works for us the best. You can get your visa for Cambodia, online prior which we like to do because we don't want any surprises or you can get it um, as a visa on arrival and the only other thing is make sure that you have six months left on your passport because otherwise you will have trouble getting into any country and getting your visa approved a lot of information I hope it's been helpful so we've just finished going through our travel tips in the restaurant um, and it's been raining outside, so it's absolutely beautiful. Good. <laughs> Look how friendly the tuk-tuk drivers are in seeing Reef. <laughs> oh, it's Batman. It's a Batman yeah. <laughs> <It's a> Batmobile. <laughs> Is it a quiet day for tuk-tuk? Yeah, right now, very quiet. Yeah, it seems... Look at the restaurant, lots yeah. of yeah. people, yeah. tourists. Oh, quiet place. Yeah, there's tuk tuk drivers like, everywhere, no tourists. Look like COVID time as well. Oh. Yeah. So he's saying that it's really quiet and it looks yeah. really quiet. So the tuk tuk drivers find it really hard. They've got to make money, they've got a business to yeah, run, exactly. they've got to pay for their food and their rent, and there's no tourists, so they don't get any money. Time of morning until afternoon time, nobody, Ooh. yeah, nobody need. They've got a, a lot of tuk tuk, they've got to stand by long time as well. Yeah. And yesterday too, I think. Yeah. Subs bye. So there's a few tourists coming into town, that's really good. This place is very touristy and very developed and very commercial, but geez, it's got a good vibe. So that is it, the heavens have opened, it is starting to rain. They are our travel tips for Cambodia. If you feel like it, and only if you feel like it, like and subscribe. But most importantly, stay calm in the farm. So we are just in the middle of a tropical downpour in Cien Reap, so I'm going to show you how heavy the rain is. It is nuts. It is like cans. It is completely tropical and the people are trying to cover up their stuff. Wow. That is crazy. There is so much water coming down on this town right now. It is so exciting and because it's been so hot, it is beautiful.
good price in the tuk-tuks. The grab prices are better, but the tuk-tuk drivers hate us. <laughs> Do you hate us? Yeah, you gotta hate us.